I cut more parts in because why not another IBM M1015 but this one is for my brother he really wanted one and this one is brand new and I got two free CPUs they are Xeon E5 2620s 6 core running at 2 GHz and free is always good and another set of memory so now I have 14 modules of 16 GB DDR3 so why do you need 14 modules? Uh, I already had 6 modules uh, and I wanted to have 2 extra modules but we forget if it was L or R memory so I got another set of 8 the same sticks and this is R and the funny thing is the other 6 are also R sticks so I now have uh, 224 gigabytes of memory whoops but I don't gonna use it all the six, uh, 16 gigabytes 6 will go back and because working on computers makes me hungry so I got this delicious pineapple pizza so wait a minute this is not a pineapple pizza, this is a different motherboard. I got the replacement motherboard in. So welcome by Retro Machines, my name is Victor Bart. So let's test this motherboard out and this is a Tyan S7050 and it's Dual Socket 2011. So as you have seen in the previous video, the Intel S2400 GP4 is dead because this chip broke off. So this board will replace this board in the build and this board is even better than this one. So here on the box, Tyan S7050, it has been in test something been and here says Pyama and here under my finger there's a password for the management interface. So I have some really good hopes that this motherboard will work. So let's build the board up first just with one CPU because I have only one CPU cooler right now. What's really cool about this motherboard is that now the power cables will fit without any extensions. So I really really hope this motherboard will work. Oh no! <laughs> Wait. Normally the PSU must be placed a bit higher. It's not working how I want it. Okay, this will work. <laughs> Uh, I need to check out if it fits in the case. I installed two memory banks, the CPU and the Noctua cooler. So let's try this out. I really, really hope this works. So here comes the power. And the fan is spinning. Please do it. You can do it, you can do it. Come on! Come on! Give me the display! This normal with the server that it takes a, f a bit to uh, give a VGA screen. Please! Yes! Yes! It's working! Woo! Oh, I love this! Yes! 32 gigabytes of memory detected. The UFI shell. Oh no! The keyboard is not working on the USB. Yes, we are in the BIOS. BIOS version 1.2. I need to check out if that's the latest. I really hope it. Then we have uh, also Xeon V2 support. Okay, 6 cores, 1200 MHz minimum speed, 2000 normal speed, 50 MB of level 3 cache, uh, hyper threading VTX. Yes, yes, yes. I'm really happy that the set is working. So let's install the 120 gigabytes of memory and we can only use uh, this 8 uh, memory slot because uh, the memory controller is in the CPU and we only have one CPU right now installed. I have two CPUs because I have one cooler now but 
I will fix that soon. I have some nice uh, things uh, coming in. So let's remove the current 32 gigabyte with two sticks. But this system has quad channel memory so we need to install with four sticks at a time to get the best performance. And I still need to figure out if you do uh, four sticks per CPU which banks you need to fill. But now I can just fill the eight banks around CPU to get the whole memory support. And the memory is 16 gigabytes for our X4 PC3 8500R from Samsung. <laughs> that looks pretty epic <laughs> with the memory banks all filled up. So maybe I should get more memory and just fill up all the banks. But I think that's a bit overkill with 256 megabytes of memory. I mean 120 gigabytes of memory is already a big overkill. Let's turn it on and see if all the memory modules are working. Okay, we have 120 gigabyte memory installed. Yes, the motherboard is alive. So we can continue the build. So I need to get the coolers, but that will be fixed and I'm so happy right now but there's an issue but not a big one because I knew a little bit that it was possible that it was an issue because the keyboard is on a USB to PS2 converter uh, with my compact keyboard and on my Intel S2600 which was a bit like this motherboard it also was an issue when you boot up you need to replug the USB uh, keyboard to another port to get it working. So I probably need to get a USB keyboard. This is the Tyen S750 and it's a dual socket 2011 motherboard for V1 and V2 CPUs. So now there's a 2620 V1 installed 6 core 2 GHz. And I will install a second one, but that is now just a free set of CPUs that I cut. And later maybe I gonna upgrade it to one of the L CPUs. I can get like 10 core 1.7 GHz Ls two times, but I'm not sure. But let's first build it with this set and see what I gonna do later. 16 uh, memory banks, DDR3 for each registered memory. Now the, it's filled up here with 16 gigabyte sticks each for 120 gigabyte of memory. But when the second CPU in, is installed, I will take the memory from here and uh, put it also in this uh, memory bank. Because these two memory banks belong to this uh, memory controller in the CPU and these are the banks from this CPU. So I need to spread it out. Uh, with a quad channel memory you need at least 4 modules per channels. But it happens that I now have 16 gigabyte sticks so that makes a lot of memory but you can also use 4 gigabyte sticks and I think 32 gigabyte sticks. A lot of options in terms of memory. Here we have a VGA, a, a COM port, quad gigabit LAN, quad USB ports here, fan headers for the rear fans, all PWM and three fan headers for the front fans, all PWM per CPU socket, also a four pin PWM. So we can really control the fans and the speed of the fans. In terms of expansion, we have a PCIe four times, a 60 times, an eight times, but the back is open, so we can put in longer card, another 16 times, another eight times also open, and an old obsolete PCI slot. Here's a Molex connector for extra power to the PCI slots if needed. And the motherboard power here is a 24 pin and two 8 pins. Here we have the header for the second COM port. Uh, the CMOS reset and power button on the motherboard which is really nice. We have an onboard USB port here and a USB header. It has an 8 port SUS controller here. And here we have 2 SATA 600 and 4 SATA 300. My plan is to put in this IBM M1015 uh, uh, SUS controller and I'm gonna flash it to IT mode so I can connect 8 SUS devices and use this card as an HBA. Let's see if the motherboard fits in my server case and I removed the two motherboard stands here for the Intel motherboard. 
But I think we need them again. And I don't have the IO shield, so I need to figure something out how I gonna fix that. Maybe I can order one on eBay, I need to check that out. Okay, the one that I removed here, I need to uh, put it back. And the one here that I removed, that one is fine, because there's not a hole here. But I think it looks really great. This motherboard into the case and it looks really really tiny now and it is a huge ATX motherboard okay I need to order an extension for the 8 pin here because it's like a few centimeters too short but this motherboard really looks that it is made to fit in this case and we have the three front fan headers here, two rear headers if you want to put fans here. But I think if we have enough airflow, we don't need to have uh, fans here because I want to have active cooling on the CPUs. But as you can see, this CPU cooler is too tall, so I gonna get three U uh, coolers and probably from Noctua. And here I will install the 10 gigabyte network card and I will put an active cooling on it. And also the IBM 1015 will go here. And then we have even more expansion room. Maybe a quad ne network card uh, to uh, use in VMs. Because we have so much memory in the system and so much CPU power. I'm thinking to make it a VM uh, server to run virtual machines. And run ZFS for the file server. So that combination of that two. I think this machine will be great for it because we have 128 gigabytes of memory and uh, ZFS re needs 1 gigabyte per 1 terabyte and with 48 terabyte of storage we need a lot of memory so the 128 is a little bit overkill but that's why I want to run the VMs and I'm thinking to try out uh, Proxmox and that's a Debian based uh, VM uh, OS and it has ZFS uh, support and I think it uh, has all the things I want to have in an operating system and with a normal Debian based system I have much more power to do more things on this machine than just a free NAS or Sigma NAS they are just a little bit too limited to do your own thing on it and uh, tweak your own configuration so now I know what I need for the cooling so I can order that part and I also probably will get a USB keyboard and I will see if I can get an IO shield for this motherboard and a longer 8 pin CPU cable. Thanks for watching and if you want to support me I have Patreon, I have Amazon affiliated links, I have Twitter and you can join Retro Machines on Facebook.